and good morning. It's nice to see you here again with ornately lanterns, stained glass painting, and also with me, Claire Swanson. Hello, nice to see you. And today I thought we would have a look at how I actually paint my lanterns. We're going to start with the lantern just behind me here, King Richard III of England, and his wife, Queen Anne Neville. So as you see, it's quite a detailed design. And we will have a look at how that's done. I thought what we would look at is actually how the lantern is put together piece by piece. So there will be several videos and today I'm going to start by showing you how I get the pattern onto the lantern to begin with before we start painting. So here is where I get my inspiration from. This is a stained glass window of King Richard III and his wife Anne Neville. Before I start, actually, just a word about why, why King Richard is the one to go for. You've probably only come across him in the Shakespeare play, where he's fairly thoroughly vilified. Um, but there is a lot of interesting history regarding King Richard III, and whether he's actually as guilty as Shakespeare paints him. There is a very large and flourishing Richard III society, particularly in England, but also America and around the world very large numbers of people who feel the historical evidence shows that Richard is innocent um, and not to blame for the death of the princes in the tower and all the other charges aimed at him by Shakespeare and so on. So um, he's an interesting character to look into and an interesting one to paint. This stained glass window is not a contemporary portrait. Um, it, ha it, it hangs in Cardiff Castle which is where you can see it. Um, on the far left and on the far right are the photos of the panels in the lantern I just showed you. Not brilliant photos, but it shows you what we're aiming for. And if we now have a look at the video, we'll be able to see how I do it. First of all, I have paint, I have sketched out my design of the front Richard panel and I am gradually outlining with vitrail glass outliner, which comes out as a paste, quite a thick paste. Uh, it's a bit like icing a cake, I say, who last, last iced the cake when I was about eight, but it does look like what they do on Bake Off. Um, you have to put a little bit of pressure on the end of the tube. Not too much, not too little, it is an art you've got to get the balance right um, but once you can get it so that enough paint is coming out and not all racing out in one big spurt you can then get a nice thin line as you see I'm following the lines of my template which is on paper below the glass I'm following the lines on there and the paint is coming out in a thin line which as it dries will actually give me a raised edge. When you run your finger across the panels on my lantern you can actually feel the picture. There's a nice texture to it uh, and it is very helpful of course when you come to painting it because you have a raised edge to separate one colour from another. But as we'll see when we go on to painting the lanterns that's not enough to stop gla solvent glass paint blending into each other and making a horrible mess. So, to some extent, the line is a guideline. You will have noticed, by the way, that at the top of the picture, the glass, which is, you can see that sort of faint grey line going downwards to the right, uh, that is the edge of the glass. But my template seems to be a bit bigger than that. So why am I not using it? The lantern I showed you at the beginning is a tall, rectangular lantern and alas I can't get that shape of lantern anymore at all so what I'm doing is changing the design very slightly and putting it onto a pyramid shaped lantern 
um, so all the sides are a slightly different shape. I've now moved on to the black so that I can get my stained glass window that I'm placing Richard against and black it gives a good idea of the leading that you get on stained glass windows. You'll notice that I'm using Le Franc and Bourgeois um, outliners and those are the paints I use. Um, here's the final thing, I am just writing King Richard III on his banner. I might point out I'm not quite as good as this, uh, the video has been speeded up by about eight times. But you can get going quite quickly actually when you've got the hang of this and I can do this standing up in a ploughed field as a show. Okay, now we go on to a Neville. So there's the paper template. I put the glass over it and I start outlining. You do read sometimes that you need to prepare the glass so carefully and you need to use methylated spirits or um, some other kind of spirit to clean it. I have to confess I don't do any of that. Um, I give it a good dust but to be quite honest uh, sometimes you're lucky if I do that. I've never actually had a problem. Um, obviously I will give it a clean with uh, white spirit if the glass is um, stained or uh, dirty in some way but normally I, I just don't bother. Those little dots are just tiny little bits of pressure on the end of the tube. You do need to be careful with your tubes of outliner. When they're new, they're a little too eager and the paint sort of gushes out of them and you get great blobs. But when they get a bit older, it's very difficult to get any paint out of them at all. You're kind of squeezing away and your thumb is going slightly numb and just not enough paint is coming out. Uh, it's tempting to waste a lot of paint by a, a lot of tubes by just using them only when they're kind of halfway full because that's when they're easiest to use but uh, you just have to get used to it because they are expensive and they come along. But I would say outlining is the most important part of glass painting so if you're a beginner this is the bit to concentrate on and once you have got your hand in at getting the right amount of pressure on your tube and you can produce thin lines the odd blob is not going to matter uh, this is the very start of the lantern we're going to be painting over all of this so if I do make a mistake it's no disaster but um, to get a really good looking piece at the end if you get your outlining right, then it's going to look an awful lot better than it would do, even if the paint is wonderful. So I am finished just about with Anne. Oh, just need to put the final line underneath her banner, which I'm doing freehand as you see. And this is the speed I normally do it. I've slowed the video down here. And yeah, now we are done. I'm going to put those pieces away for 24 hours so that they dry thoroughly before we go on to the paint. So at this point it will be back to me and um, I hope that's been helpful for you. Do come and have a look at the following series of videos when I start to put the paint on and it will be good to see you then. Okay, thanks very much and see you later. Any comments? please put them down below any questions you've got. Okay, thanks again and see you soon. Like the video please and do subscribe. Goodbye.